Bismillah, alhamdulillah. Welcome to the Dean Show. I'm Eddie, your host. We have an exciting show for you today. 9 11. We'll be talking about Floyd Money Mayweather. We'll talking about 50 Cents and Hernan, our special guest here on the Dean Show. So much to talk to you about. Don't go nowhere for this exciting episode of the Dean Show. We'll be right back. This is the Dean, the Dean Show. This is the Dean, this is the Dean Show. 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 Back on the Dean Show. Welcome, welcome. Como estas, amigos? Bien, alhamdulillah. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. A little bit of Spanish, Arabic, English. Absolutely. Bilingual. Alhamdulillah. How you doing, Hernan? Yes. Open the show, and I'm talking about Hernan. I'm talking about 9-11. Uh, we're talking about Floyd May Mayweather in the mix, undefeated boxing champ, 50 cents. How do you fit in with 50 Cent and, and, and Floyd Money Mayweather? And this is an exciting show. But before we give the audience the bigger picture, we're going to have you introduce yourself. Hernan, Jiu-Jitsu superstar? <laughs> so we got boxing, Jiu-Jitsu. People think like, what are you going to be uh, fighting, challenging Floyd Mayweather? <laughs> oh, man. Maybe one day, inshallah. <laughs> For fun. Um, alhamdulillah. My name is uh, Hernan Guadalupe. Um, it's, it's pronounced Hernan in, in Spanish. Um, Do you speak Spanish? I speak Spanish. Oh, uno poquito. That's nice. Muy bien. Muy bien. <laughs> español muy bien. Muy bien. Um, my, um, my parents, they, they traveled over here from Ecuador in uh, the late 70s. Um, alhamdulillah, searching that better life. They left, you know, their futures, their careers behind in, in search to provide for myself and for my brothers, um, uh, something better, alhamdulillah. Yeah. So tell us now, you, you have a very exciting story. On 9-11, which we know that this was a sad event, only an idiot would be sitting there celebrating that. Mm -hmm. Women died, children died, yeah. you know, uh, whites died, blacks died, non-Muslims died, Muslims died. Correct. So we know that Islam has nothing to do with this. Right. So we're not revisiting this. We know that Islam and Islamic scholars have condemned this. But you now, and, and just one more thing to know, I mean, FBI statistics, you know, because many people, Islamophobes and people who are trying to make Islam out like the boogeyman, just look at the facts. You know, Islam is on, look, we're showing a chart right now, and it's showing Islam, even though that anyone who's doing terrorist ass has nothing to do, they're doing it according to their own desires and whims. But look at Islam, it's at the lowest totem pole, according to FBI statistics. Look at these charts. So we're not going to go in, that's not the topic, other people can uh, look at the other topics that we've covered condemning this. But now you accepted Islam, that's submission to the one who created you, the one God on 9-11. Correct. Okay, so before we get into 50 Cent's Money Mayweather and all this and how this connects, you're Jiu-Jitsu, you're also a Jiu-Jitsu uh, player, you, uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Talk to us, what happened? Why did this happen? Well, my parents, when they came over here, they, um, they wanted that better lifestyle for us. And one of the ways that they felt would be a, a, a catalyst to having a good lifestyle is to enroll us in a Catholic school. So from first grade all the way to eighth grade, I was in Catholic school. And during that time, um, we learned about the Bible, catechism, took all my sacraments. And, at the, and also, I was an altar boy during that, during that time, from fourth grade to eighth grade. And I was in the church. I was, I was learning, I was studying, I was assisting. And you're behind the scenes seeing pretty much everything. Um, for, the, for a long time, it was just following what, what was instructed. But it came to a point where everybody, youth comes in, in, into their lives and start asking themselves, what's their purpose in life? What is my goal? What am I doing? And then, and at the same time, because I was in a religious environment, I started asking religious questions. I started asking about 
the, the Trinity and the concept of God and Catholicism in, in its theology and its practices and certain things never lined up. My heart never really accepted these things, um, even though I followed it for so long. But it came to a point where I started asking these questions and it just, it didn't click. Like one plus one plus one is still one. And I, I was always into math and it doesn't make sense. You're talking um, about the Holy Ghost God and right, Jesus Trinity, God right, and right. Father to God, right. but not three gods, one God. Doesn't right. make sense. It, it didn't make sense. And you're taught, you're taught in math that one plus one plus one is three, but then in theology, you're taught that three is one or one is three. And it's just, it just didn't make sense. And on top of the fact that um, there were certain things that, that you saw that you just didn't feel that were right. One of the, one of the things was the, the amount of wealth that was collected, the amount of gold that was stored. And then you'd go outside and you see many people living in poverty. Um, and it just, it just something inside of me never really felt that this was the correct way. So I started a journey of searching the truth. I, I had friends that were different denominations of Christianity. I started asking them questions about their faiths. Um, I read about Judaism, Hinduism. I was into Kung Fu when I was a kid. So I started learn. I started, you Did know. Did you get looking. a black belt in Kung Fu? Um, I studied for 10 years. 10 years? But I never really, in, in, in Kung Fu there is a black belt, but they more go by like sashes rather than colors. It's like Sifu? Right, Sifu. So I, I studied it and I competed against the black belt level, but it was so, it was such a challenge that I stayed right in the, kind of in the middle. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, so I, I because I was into that type of culture, um, I, I'd also looked into the Chinese religion, and but nothing ever clicked. Nothing ever really stood out and said, you know what, this is what I want to choose, and um, and it didn't happen until I actually uh, got to college. And actually, before that, I remember when I was about sixteen, about seventeen or eighteen years old. Um, I made dua, I made, I made supplication to, to God to, to guide me because I felt lost. I mean, now, when you say God, were you talking about what many Christians believe, Holy Ghost God, no. Jesus God, who, which God are you talking about? Allah, the, 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 one, the one true God. The but one you never said Allah God. at that time. No, I didn't. What, now, I didn't what, when you would define, for people who've never heard this term, who are you praying to? What? The creator of the heavens and the earth, the mm -hmm. one who we all seek from the one who doesn't need anything or anyone um, he's the provider the 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 protector the creator um, the one who doesn't have any children or doesn't or wasn't born would, 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 would it be safe to say where this would be where Christians considered like the father the ultimate yes, God? Right. okay the the supreme the being, supreme the being one, so you're right. praying to the supreme right. being the creator right. not not the created not not Jesus or any Holy Spirit anything like that I was I had a, I, I what about all the saints that come into the mix in right. Catholicism? What I mean, about Saint would, Michael, Judy, this saint, that saint? Were you praying through any of them? No, absolutely not. I mean, for me, at that age, I already understood that these people, they were just people like us. And the only reason that they were raised to that status was because people raised them to that status. Um, God didn't give them that status per se. So for me, I was going straight to the source. So now you pray to the Creator because you want to know your purpose in life. Exactly. So I found myself one night crying, just waterfalls of tears, and asking God to guide me, asking Allah to guide me and give me the truth, show me what the truth is. And really, I thought the truth was going to come the next day. I mean, it was such a sincere dua, uh, such a sincere supplication that I, I really believed that the truth was going to be just fall into my lap the next day. Um, but it didn't happen that way. So I continued my life, and because I was so caught up in, in the mix of the youth doing things that youth do, partying and, and going out and other vices that you know, we don't want to mention, but you kind of get the, the idea, um, you, you, you sort of kind of got deviated from, you know, from, those, from believing or, or you just kind of started in, you know, delving into things that are, are not permissible or so, not so now you're you. now you're away from so you went from being into religion, religion religious to, kind to of deviate, yes. now it not making sense not may, being able to comprehend certain right. things how about asking questions to the higher ups i mean it stopped after a while because the only response that that they came down to was son you just have to believe and i used to ask myself how can i believe in something that i don't understand how, how is it that God has made this religion the religion for all of mankind, yet there are so many ambiguities, so many holes, 
that we just can't comprehend. So I just got disenchanted and just stepped away. And I ended up saying, I, I, I never disbelieved that there was God. I always believed that God existed or the Supreme Being existed. And you would say I kind of fell into um, being agnostic, you would say. So you believe in God, but not necessarily a specific faith. You're not following a specific way. Um, and that was like that for a long time, you know, through high school, um, even my early years of college. And then when I got to college, I finally met a gentleman who was Muslim. Uh, he was another student with, with me. Um, and we got together through, through other means, not necessarily religious means, and we started hanging out, playing basketball. Uh, we would get together in the dorm rooms to hang out, and we started talking about different topics. Um, government, um, religion, sports, current events, and all these... Boxing. Boxing. Music. You know, yeah, martial so arts. martial arts. Yeah, he was big into martial arts. He too. was big into martial yeah. arts. Now did you get from going to religious to going towards the 50 cent lifestyle, oh, yeah. you know, the celebrity lifestyle. And that's where we're going to kind of lead into also with Definitely. the Floyd Money Mayweather and 50 cents where you idolize Menudo. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what was, uh, Ricky right. Martin. When, and when we were young. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So those are the people now. Did you at one point in your life say, man, I want to be on stage like that. Yeah. I want to be, you know, a star. Yeah. I mean, everybody, everybody, I mean, for the most part. Kids, youth that are that are in college, they're they're there to make money. I mean, they're there to you know to get the education, but the goal is to become successful. So status and money is on Absolutely. your mind. Absolutely. So let's hold it right there. We're going to take a break. We got so much more to talk about, and I'm not going to let you down. We mentioned at the beginning all these big names: Fifty Cent, Floyd Money, Mayweather, Hernan, boxing, Jiu Jitsu. Put them up against each other. So much more. Don't go anywhere. On the outside, everything looks good. You see the hundred thousand dollar cars. You see a lot of diamonds. You see a lot of females, and they think that this is, you know, this is a life. This is, this is like, you know, paradise right here on earth. It's not anyone's job to go into someone's heart and change their heart. Your job is to tell people what the truth is. And the reality of it is, while we're sitting here, while I'm sitting here constantly paying for the disease, the cure was free. Back here with Hernan, and we have a very exciting show for you. 9-11, we mentioned 9-11, mm -hmm. that you accepted the purpose of life on 9-11, the purpose of life that the Creator sent down, not man-made. Right. The man-made way of life, it wasn't making sense. And no man-made way of life, at, and you try to fit it on the whole globe of humanity, it's not going to make sense. Right. From the Creator, it's got to make sense. One Absolutely. plus one is two, one is one, it's not the three, and all this other mathematical gymnastics that don't... Right. Makes sense. So now you're in college, right? right? And now that's like, for some people, it's party city. I mean, for me, it was prime time because this was the first time I was actually, actually out of my house. Prime time, right? Yeah. I was actually out of my house. My family, again, you know, they were very protective of us. So this was the first time I was living on my own. Oh, boy. That's a big... And, um, you know, and, and I really pretty much came out of my shell during that time. Because now supervision at home, people, I mean, parents, you're right. kind of a little shy to do certain things. Correct. But now you're outside of the house. Right. Okay. So you kind of got into the, I got into the mix, you know, meeting a lot of people, socializing, attending parties. I, I joined the Latino fraternity that was very social. Oh boy, now you're in a fraternity. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And, and this um, is all about parties. And it's, it's, they might do some good things, right. but at the end of the day, it's like do some good things so we can party harder. I mean, that, that was, for some people it was like that, yeah. you know? And um, so, so I, was, I was into this stuff. And at the same time, I still was in that search. And um, I, I, I met my friend. He, he, um, he introduced me to Islam during these, little, these small little gatherings. And he would talk about it. And he would talk about all these topics, politics, government, current events, sports, and all that stuff from an Islamic angle. So this is the first time I heard the word Allah. The, the word Muhammad, you know, the, the name Muhammad, Islam, and this was brand new to me. I, didn't, I never heard this before. And, um, and it's funny because when I think about it, Allah uh, or God, he 
in my, in my life, I, I was introduced to all these religions and I thought I knew it all, but I never learned about Islam until this specific point. And um, my heart was drawn to it because it made sense to me. When I asked, and I started asking him the questions I would ask the priests. So when I asked him, okay, how, what do you believe? How do you, how do you define the Trinity? What, who is God? Who is Jesus? Um, he would tell me from the Islamic point of view and it entered my heart and it filled my heart with happiness. It was for the first time there was that click that I was looking for. One is one, no complications. Jesus was a messenger and a prophet. He was just a man who was sent with a message deliver, to deliver mankind with glad tidings of worshiping Allah alone and entering paradise. That makes sense. Who's Mary? Mary is the mother of Jesus, not the mother of God, because then there's a, 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 a circle that you just can't understand. Uh, because if she's the mother of God and the mother of Jesus, then how is it that God gave her life, but she gave life to God? And it's just too confusing. But when, she, when he explained it, Mary was just a woman, a, 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 a righteous, pious woman who gave birth to Jesus, the messenger. It made sense. So all the questions were all lucid. Questions. The answers were lucid and clear. Clear. No ambiguity. No ambiguity. Purpose of life. Was it answered now? Yes, yes. And when to I the asked, same satisfaction of your soul? Yes. And when I asked him, what is... What is our purpose in this life? He would ask, That we're not here, that God didn't create, Allah didn't create any, uh, the, the man and, the, and the, the jinn kind, except to worship him. And that made sense. And when he said, everything is worship. You coming to school is worship. You, you waking up in the morning is worship. You eating is everything. And I was like, that makes sense. As long me. as you're God conscious, as as you're, you're God doing conscious. it with the right intentions to Correct. please God. Right. To serve God, that's an act of worship. And one of my biggest things growing up was like, why do I have to pray in the church for God to answer my prayers? What If he knows everything and sees everything, why can't I pray at home, in my, the privacy of my own home? And that was one of the biggest challenges for me growing up. And when he told me, your relationship is with God alone. There's no intermediary. You're not praying to Jesus. You're not praying to saints. You're praying wherever you want. Um, except certain areas, of course, but wherever you want, but directly to God. And for me, that was that's what I was looking for. No secretary in the middle. No secretary. Just direct, direct dial-up. Exactly. Now you talked about procrastination. Mm -hmm. You figured out within your very self, your innate nature was like yeah. pulling you, it was drawing you to yeah. it, while the other belief, it was just something that just didn't make sense, right. and your insides, it, it didn't connect with it. Right. Your insides are connecting with this? Absolutely. But now you talked to me before a little bit, I heard that you were procrastinating a lot. Right. Now 9-11 comes in the mix. Tell right. us about this. So, like I mentioned, you're caught up in, in this lifestyle, you know? The Floyd this. Money Mayweather lifestyle, right. 50 Cent lifestyle, right. Menudo lifestyle. You know, maybe not to that extreme, but yeah. um, definitely you want to be successful you know yeah. I wanted a BMW I wanted my own house I want I want this and these things are, are good in a sense but you know you're, you're um, this is this is what most guys at college that's what they want become presidents of companies CEOs and stuff and um, and that's the, my direction as well you know I wanted to be a successful engineer um, but um, I didn't I, when I when I was learning about Islam my heart accepted it completely I said, I told myself, this is the religion that I'm going to be, uh, this is the religion that I want to be part of, but right now I'm having too much fun. Um, I, this is the first time out of my house, um, I, I'm meeting all these people, I'm having, I'm going to all these parties, socializing, and, and um, I just don't want to let this go yet. Um, so I told myself, I'm going to wait until I get older to accept Islam. Once you, you know, you're serious and you're more established and stuff. Mm, procrastination. Procra I procrastinated. One of the devil's biggest tricks. Right. You got time. Right, exactly. And then, um, and then one, one day happened. September 11th came. Um, up to this point, I accepted Islam in my heart. But in action, I said, you know what, I got to wait because I'm, just, I'm enjoying my life right now. I ended up going to class in the morning and... The university that I attended, uh, Stevens Tech, is actually it's in Hoboken, New Jersey. So Hoboken is actually on the, the bank of the Hudson River. So they, it faces Manhattan, Lower Manhattan. It's directly across the river. Um, so I went to I went to class. I came back to class, and my friend gave me a call on the phone. So I, I answered the call, and she said that the buildings are on fire, meaning the twin towers were on fire. And I was like, that's impossible because I just saw them coming back from class, and they were fine. Um, she said, no, turn it on, turn it on, and check it out. So I turned on the news, and lo and behold, they're, they're on fire. And um, I started, I freaked out, I mean, what's going on, you know? This, I mean, this is a monument that, it's a historic monument, you're, like, you know, you're really in awe. 
Um, I ran up to my friend, my friend's room, um, the one who was giving me dawah, the Muslim brother who was giving me dawah, and we both ran outside to see what was going on, and it was chaotic. I mean, the uh, the school was full of students, scared, worried, concerned, and by this time, everybody knew there was two planes that hit. I mean, people saw it, and there was reports already that a plane struck the the, the towers, and we were all in shock. Um, and actually, at that point, I was really, really freaked out because the school where, where I went also has a huge tower as well. So I kept on thinking, well, what about if another plane hits here and something happens to us and we're right here? Um, and during that whole time, we're, we're, I'm, I'm concerned. And it wasn't until the buildings actually collapsed. You know, after a couple hours, the buildings actually collapsed that reality hit. Reality hit me. And... Um, I thought to myself at that time, all these people, they woke up in the morning thinking that it was gonna be another normal day, thinking that they would have another tomorrow. They were gonna wake up, have breakfast, have lunch, have dinner, hang out with their friends, family members, play sports, whatever they did during the day, they thought they were going to do. But Allah had a different plan for them. Allah decreed that this was their final day. And for me, visual or, or seeing that from across the river and also knowing that Islam is the truth, that there's a reward for those people who believe in Allah and worship Him alone, paradise. And there's also a, a destination for those who disobey, who want to follow their desires, who want to disobey Allah. Um, there is a, a, a specific place for them as well. Knowing this and knowing at that same time that I was being arrogant, procrastinating, putting it off, being a... a servants of Allah, obeying Him alone, worshiping Him alone, because I wanted to have fun, it scared me. And realizing that, what about tomorrow I don't live? What about if tomorrow I don't have an opportunity to become Muslim? What about when, I, when I'm 80? It, it never comes. For me, it was, it was a, a, a real shock. I, used to, I remember even looking at my, my watch and just seeing the, the, the seconds pass by and worrying what's going to happen next. At that moment, my friend, he taps me on my shoulder, and uh, the same friend, he taps me on my shoulder, and he says, look, this is too much for me. I need to go to back to my room. I, I want to go pray. And without any hesitation, without even thinking, well, you know what? If I go with him and I, be, you know, and I, and I follow him and pray with him, that might not, you know, it's, it, it's, it's going to be a life change, and then um, all the parties and all that stuff is going to be gone. I didn't even think about that at that point. I, all I thought about was I need to do the right thing. I went back with him to his room, he showed me how to make uh, ablution, wudu. Um, he, he, he taught me how to say shahada, the declaration of faith, and I prayed with him for the first time. And from that point on, I became Muslim. And um, So from that point on, you submitted to the submitted. will of God. That's what a Muslim is, one right. who submits themselves not to a man, a monkey, a woman, to Jesus, a messenger, yeah. to Muhammad, but you submit to the one who created all of them. Yes. Yeah, you did that. I did that at that point, and alhamdulillah, it was the, the best decision that I ever made. I mean... Every, and you know, all, the, all the, the thoughts that I needed to wait to in order to, and let me just enjoy my life, it wasn't the case. Once I accepted Islam, I was completely happy. Um, there was ways for us to have fun as Muslims, healthy fun. And on top of that, my relationship with my parents got better, with my brother got better. I felt that I knew what my, I had a direction and purpose now. I had the, the roadmap on how to lead my life. All the things, the, the vices that were really hurting me, you know, they were finally washed away and I had a clear path. And it was the best thing, alhamdulillah, that I, that I did for myself, you know. The tranquility and peace into your absolutely, heart? Absolutely, absolutely. You had purpose now, you had a plan. Absolutely. God's plan, not your desire, is exactly. dictating your way. Right. It was clear. It was clear. Happiness. Happiness, complete happiness. Something that money can't buy. Money it can't buy that. Yeah, we're, we're going to take a break and we'll continue on. And now for all the fans who are tuning in just to hear what we have to say about the un defeated heavyweight. No, what is he, a uh, junior heavyweight or what is it? Uh, he's, uh, he's a... Oh, lightweight, light, think, light like, heavyweight champion. Oh, Sorry if we're saying that wrong. Yeah. And 50 Cent, one of the most popular uh, yeah. rap artists out in the world. We're going to be bringing this into the mix when we come back. So don't go anywhere. An exciting show with Hernan here on The Dean Show. We'll be right back. Allah, there's only one say to me, why have you become a Muslim? No, I, I give a very frivolous answer. I say, I want to be on the side of the angels. Allah. 
Tupac is a guy, he's the number one rap artist in the world. He sold over 60 million records worldwide. 60 million? 60 million. He was a young guy who had basically everything that some of the youth would think that life is all about. He had everything you can imagine. The Dean Show. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side. I am not afraid to stand alone. Back here on The Dean Show with Hernan, Accepted Islam, Submission to the Will of the One God, the Way of Life of All the Messengers. Jesus was a Muslim, he submitted to God, Moses, Abraham, and last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, who is, till the end of time, a messenger just like all of them, who call people to submit to the Creator. Don't submit to the creation. Mm -hmm. Do good deeds. Obey God, you get to paradise. Disobey God, follow your desires. Consequences, hellfire. Yep. We care, that's what we're sharing. So now, your story, inshallah, God willing, can affect so many people's lives. Sure. You are procrastinating like many people. They tune in and they say, man, that makes sense. Only worship the one who created creation. Don't worship the creatures of God. Worship the creator alone. Don't set up a partner with God. As soon as you put divinity to a holy ghost, to a saint, you've canceled out pure monotheism. Absolutely. And this is what it's about, pure monotheism. So Floyd Money Mayweather, now he's involved at a higher level into the sport game yeah. and his sidekick, his best friend, who we want to invite to the purpose of life. You know the purpose of life now and you're happy, something that money cannot buy, you have. And you know a little bit about Floyd? I know a little what, bit What do you know about him? Um, I remember watching him when I was younger, um, you know, undefeated boxer, probably one of the most popular boxing figures there is now. So, um, real good boxer. Man. Undefeated, right? Undefeated. Undefeated. Yeah. Undefeated, like and and I've, I've no, have you noticed after some of his bouts, usually from the ones that I've seen, he thanks God. First off, I want to thank God for, for this victory. Because uh, without God, all this wouldn't be possible. But exactly what is that power that allows you to overcome those obstacles? Uh, uh, God. What else can I say? God. He says, you know, I like to thank God. Yeah. He doesn't throw Jesus in the mix. Some will say, I like, to, which that doesn't take, I mean, Jesus was a mighty messenger of God. Nowhere did he ever call people to worship him. Never did he claim he was God. But now, uh, Floyd Mayweather, he does thank God at the end. Yeah. So he, there's hope for everybody to change. Yeah, absolutely. So anybody who's admiring 50 Cent and Floyd Money Mayweather, if they continue to follow them, is that the right way or wrong way? For swearing, cursing, partying, the, you know, uh, all these other things that go against what the Creator wants us to do. Nah, it's definitely not the right way. It's not the right way. So tell us now, you're involved in, in Jiu-Jitsu? Yes. Okay, did you ever box? I did. I did, you know, yeah. did some boxing, kickboxing, yeah. you know, with all the other martial arts I did, yeah. So, so now, it's very important now, we as Muslims, ones who have submitted to the rule of God, we know the purpose. If, if, if you actually, you, you don't care, you don't share. Right. So we as Muslim, every Muslim's duty is to deliver the message, to share the purpose of life with the world. Right. And what better person to share it with than some of these high up celebrities that, man, if they come to the realization that this is the truth, right. provide, it, 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 provided that it, it, it provides proof, it provides evidence, it's not blind faith yeah. like you experienced. Mm -hmm. Many of their followers, they'll also investigate, and that's what we want people to do, to ask those tough questions to their higher-ups to investigate, and they'll come to the same realization, if they're sincere, that Islam is from the Creator. It provides all the proof and evidences that is, is the truth. So we know that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that he made a dua. You know this dua when the, per the person of that time, Umar ibn Khattab, yeah. he was like a person of prestige. Mm -hmm. People admired him. And tell us a, bit, a little about this. Yeah, I remember um, reading about this. Um, the Prophet, peace be upon him, he actually made dua for two people in his, in his tribe. Uh, the first one was Amar ibn Hisham, or, or Abu Jahl, he was best known in history, and Umar ibn al-Khattab. Um, and he said, Oh Allah, strengthen Islam through one of the two, for, through one of the two. Because during that time, these two gentlemen were, were affluent. They, were, they had 
you know, prestige and power and influence on the people. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, he made dua that Allah be, uh, uh, excuse me, that the Islam be uplifted and strengthened through one of these two gentlemen. And alhamdulillah, it was Omar bin al-Khattab that Allah guided and accepted Islam. And we know that he was, uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said if there was any other Prophet to be after me, it would have been Omar, Omar bin al-Khattab. So you can see the status that Islam be, um, uh, was raised at just through this gentleman. And it reminds me, and when we talk about these celebrities uh, in, in discussions, you know, these people have influence. They, people follow them, you know, whether it be uh, uh, Mayweather or 50 Cent or, or any other individual in entertainment or sports business, they have followings. People flock to them. You millions know, of millions, followers. Millions. millions. By, by CDs. They, some people worship, that's like an act of worship. People worship them. Some of them do. They do. Yeah. Because they know everything about their lives. Right. If they say turn left, they'll turn left. Right. Wear this, they'll wear that. Yeah. Jump like this, they'll right. jump like that. They dictate, they dictate how society pretty much li lives their life, and especially the youth. And, um, and it, the hadith or this dua reminds me of that because, so imagine if, if you, you make dua for these people or invite them to Islam, the, the effect that they can have on their immediate following. You know, and, and, and we've seen it before. We've seen it with other other um, singers and rappers. Like Muhammad Ali, Muhammad Cat, Ali Stevens. Cat Stevens. Even like current times, Napoleon and Loon and all these people. And I know you've had them on your show yeah, too. Yeah, mashallah. So these people, they have an influence. So inshallah, it's, it's, it'll be a great thing that, you know, this person also comes into Islam and have that impact on it. And that's what we want to do right now, because now with all the money, the millions, he gets paid like four, uh, Floyd, money Mayweather, they call him, yeah. used to be Pretty Boy Floyd, yeah. and he'd pull out the, like, the stack of uh, uh, hundreds, mi uh, counting millions in front of him, he's in jail now, and his money can't get him out right now. Right. He's in jail for domestic violence, uh -huh. and usually when people are closed behind four doors, now they'll reflect Stopping. and think, right. and his money can't save him now. He'll be out, I think, in, 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 a, in a few weeks, in, in a little bit over a month, something like that, right. but he has... Now we have a way to get a hold of him. Mm -hmm. Before, people were like, man, how can we invite him? But we're putting up on the screen now his address. So we're asking people, it's a call to action, send Floyd Money Mayweather a letter on why he should be a Muslim. Definitely. I mean, and definitely. Allah will facilitate the way. Let's plant the seeds. Because if maybe I send a letter, you, that's one out of how many does he get. But imagine if all the thousands of Muslims, millions of Muslims now start writing him a letter, one letter, and inviting him and giving him the reasons why he should be a Muslim. Sure. Maybe... Tomorrow, when he reads it, he might accept, and then all his followers, all of them, start looking into it, and maybe they'll accept this way of life that's from the Creator Islam too. Or, you know what, maybe in 20 years, hey, those, those letters that he got, all the thousands, you know, it can have an impact on, him. Have an impact on him, huh? And then he's going to share with the sidekick 50 cents, <laughs> maybe it's 50 cents drop, and, it, and it's true. Everything they've done in the past, okay, let's say they turn to Islam, they turn to the Creator, all of them sins are forgiven if they turn to God Almighty sincerely. All of the evil that they might have done. The slate is clean. The slate is clean. Yes. That's amazing, right? It's so any closing comments and suggestions now? You also have some, some books. Your, yes. your website now, you've, you're doing some great. You're, yeah. you're actively involved in the Dawah. So, so tell us how people can get a hold of you. We, um, when I became, you know, after I became Muslim you know, and, and being involved in the Latino community, there's not that many resources for Spanish-speaking Muslims and even non-Muslims. So we took the initiative to translate a lot of articles into Spanish that people can benefit from. And one of the, and the, and the sister company, a sister project is actually making books for Spanish-speaking children. So we, we noticed there's a lot of Latinos, just like myself, are having children, alhamdulillah, becoming Muslim. They're Muslim from birth. There are no resources for them to learn. So we've actually made books. Uh, my wife, she's the, the main um, director on this project. She actually writes and publishes her own books. What's the website that people can get this at? The Hablamos Islam yeah. Niños. So people can get these books here. Yes. At, uh, say it again. Hablamos Islam Niños. So okay. we have about five books that we've published to date that they can come as coloring books, you know, great printing, a real bright that they can benefit in shell. And it teaches them you know, a number of Islamic values, mm -hmm. like how to go to Juma and the importance of the veil and how to, you know, how to prepare for Ramadan, yeah. stuff like that. So. Tell us now, we're out of time. We got like 30 seconds. Now I want you to do it in Spanish 
and I want you to do it in English in a few seconds, uh, encouraging people not to procrastinate. Maybe some Muslims got some non-Muslims, brothers, hum brothers in humanity. It's like, man, this makes sense, man. The guy was there, and he went from a way of life that didn't make sense. Then he went to party, agnostic, and he, through all of that confusion, he prayed directly to God. Allah facilitated the way, and now he's got peace. He knows his purpose. But some people, they procrastinate, and you know what? They get nowhere. Right. So what, what uh, for the, let's say Floyd Money Mayweather, he gets these letters, and he's right. like, man, you know what? They're right. And he's not distracted by all the money, but now for him not to procrastinate, what do you got to say to Floyd? Um, Allah says in the Quran that, that this life is just a mere enjoyment, a temporary enjoyment, but the life in the hereafter is much better. And this is something that I tell a lot of people, that um, this is temporary. This is not going to last. The money is not going to last. When you pass away, that money is going to be spread to somewhere else. You're going to be there alone. And you don't want to be that person who's wretched. You, you want to be that one who is given, who is shown mercy and eventually enter paradise where all those riches that you had in this world are going to be multiplied by billions, gazillions, whatever it is. So don't waste time. Don't waste time being caught up in this mere enjoyment and focus on what your purpose in life is. Focus on what your, uh, God intended for you to, to do in this life and to be successful, but in the way of by pleasing Him and worshiping Him alone. May Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one who created this whole universe and everything, the one who Jesus prayed to, may he reward you. Thank you very much for being with us. Yeah, thank you. And we've come to the end of another exciting show here in Adin Show. We're here every week. You don't catch us internationally. We're viewed all over the globe on many satellite channels. And if you're catching us on the TV, continue to tune in same time, same channel. Or you can visit us at thedeanshow.com to catch many of our programs. And procrastination is something that is a tool that shaitan, the devil, uses. Don't procrastinate. Know that you got one shot to get it right, one life to live, and get it right now. Because at the end, you'll be in the grave, the dirt will be in your mouth, and it's over, it's finished. And all the wealth that you have compiled will not save you at all from what comes next. It's your actions, developing yourself to live a righteous life, a pious life, a life that brings peace and happiness, and it's according to God's game plan, not your desires. And Floyd Money Mayweather, the invitation is to him and to 50 and to all the celebrities out there and the laymen and the white collar, black collar work or yellow Chinese. Everyone has the potential to submit alone to the creator of the heavens and the earth and not his creation and to live a good, wholesome, organic, righteous life. Write to Floyd. We have the opportunity. He's in jail right now. Send him a letter on why he should accept Islam, the benefits of it, and why he should be a Muslim one who submitted himself to the one God and all the beautiful rewards that come with that. Write him a letter. And don't forget, every week we're here. Pick up the new Dunya Tadeen also. Share it with your friends and your family. And if you want, operators are standing by right now. If you want to accept, you're like, how can I do it? 1-800-662-ISLAM. We don't need your money. Don't worry. We're not trying to sell you some fairy dust or any of that other hocus pocus mumbo jumbo. Call us right now. If you want to accept the way of life from the creator of the heavens and earth, it's simple. There's only one God. Worship him, not his creation. And Muhammad is the last and final messenger. And then you accept Jesus, Moses, Abraham. They were all messengers of God. None of them called people to submit to themselves or to saints or to idols or icons. Only to God. Call us. 1-800-662-ISLAM. We'll see you next time. Peace be with you. This is the